Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Glenn Co. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Stochastic. And today, I'm really excited to showcase uh, one of our latest features on our product called XChat, focused around solving decision automation and task execution through construction of intelligent workflows using natural language. So before I dive into the introduction of the, uh, of the product and the feature, I'd like to give you a little bit of introduction of myself and the team. So Stochastic's vision is to empower businesses and consumers to create their own personalized and specialized AI using the latest research in AI and computing systems. My co-founder, Yuji, and I, we met together while working at Harvard University Architecture Circuits and Compilers Lab, where we, one of the latest projects that we worked on together was a real-time speech natural language processing engine, where we demonstrated running automatic speech recognition on machine translation real-time on an edge device, which included building our own um, LLM dedicated inference chip um, in 2021. And we decided to, um, you know, launch a uh, start stochastic to help um, AI be more accessible to others um, instead of just the large um, AI leaders like Google, Meta, and um, Microsoft. We're currently working with several Fortune 500 companies and also top universities, including Thor Industries, Airstream, Harvard University, Intel, and more. And last year, we were fortunate enough to win Harvard University's President's Innovation Challenge. As I mentioned, um, today we're just going to focus on this new feature where we're tackling the decision-making um, um, problem. And current, you know, if you look at the current LLMs um, widely available, such as like OpenAI's um, ChatGPT or Anthropic's Claude, these LLMs are great um, as, as for a general purpose. But then when you start using them for decision-making, you're going to come across multiple different hurdles. First of all, like these um, LLMs are hard to actually um, make them do a decision making like the humans. For example, when you are a human, um, you are often given instructions by your manager or your supervisors on certain things that you have to decide on, whether it's like triaging the tickets or the support emails, for example, and then who to send this tickets to. And, and, and in what situation would you want to escalate it to a different person if you can't do it? And second, also, like the, um, the peer just using the LLMs as is doesn't allow you to incorporate the new information and feedback that comes from you know, these real human interactions. When the manager or your supervisor tells you that, no, what you did with that ticket is incorrect, you should try this other method next time, you know, how do you actually learn, make these LLMs learn from these interactions that is um, that exists in human interactions, but you know currently really tough to tackle using the DLLMs as is. And also um, the last component is um, decision chaining. So if you want to make a sequence of decisions where you have like a long series of decisions to be made to process a single ticket, current LLMs, because they're lacking um, the reasoning capabilities, oftentimes it's really difficult to have them go through long sequence of decisions to actually carry out a, a single task. So um, I'm going to focus on how we tackle this problem by creating intelligent workflows using human language. And I'm sure you guys would already all know this. The AI agents are great because you know, once you have them in production, you can now have um, these agents handle like customer uh, support requests 24-7 um, instead of humans having to stay up to, you know, handle these tickets late night. And also, um, they allow you to scale to a large number of requests. Like humans obviously cannot multitask as well as the machines. And being able to multi um, handle large number of requests simultaneously is a huge advantage. And also, once you have these agents learn your, your exact procedure of making the decisions. And um, if you teach them how to make the correct decisions, then you could rely on them to be making the same sort of decisions of repeatedly, um, unlike humans, where, where you know, if you're tired, you could be making a wrong decision, whereas like the AIs would not um, have that sort of problem. 
So um, the way we um, tackle this problem is by allowing the users to create an intelligent and actionable workflows using natural language. So for example, if you look at this, like the user is saying, hey, can you fetch a ticket from Zendesk, process a ticket by generating an appropriate response using customer support knowledge base if needed. And then you can see that the AI has already started creating some plans, and there's a visualization on the right side to kind of um, guide you through each of the steps um, in a more visually pleasing way. So I will now um, then show you a recorded uh, video of our product um, doing the decision making. Can you guys see this? Yeah, so when you type in a request, like such as like fetch a ticket from Zendesk and process a ticket, the workflow AI will initially create the plan that is required to um, actually handle the ticket. And once you review the th uh, plan, you can make modifications using natural language. So for example, in this ex demo, we're adding a step two to order a part replacement for the customer. So now if you look at the new plan, you can see a new step was added. Number three over here is a new plan that was a new action that was added to handle that. And then now we're telling the AI to ex actually execute the plan on the specific ticket number. So you know, once you, once you execute it, it's going to run through each of the steps one by one and show you all the intermediate outputs for each of the action items. And basically, um, you could review this on a single ticket or like a couple of tickets before you um, decide to save this um, as a repeatable workflow. And then if you look at this, um, I had actually modified the response to be more polite and uh, more appropriate for the customer as opposed to the AI's initially generated um, response. So now we're going to show you that you could actually run this on all unsolved, resolved, un unresolved tickets. And then you can see that then it's going to run all these uh, workflows, the same workflow across all of the, all of the un unresolved tickets simultaneously. And you could also see that the changes that we had made earlier in the response to be more polite and appropriate for customer has been added to the actual workflow. So what, what we wanted to highlight with that is the, um, how you can easily provide feedback as a, you know, to, to guide the AI to behave in a certain way, which is what I mentioned earlier about like how um, humans constantly improve their responses or how they act by interacting with their, you know, your supervisor or your peers collecting feedback. And we were, um, I was trying to just show you how that is incorporated here. So you know, once you run that, you'll be able to see these drafts generated in an application. And of course, like you could use the same thing with other, other applications as well, whether it's like Salesforce for um, if you're doing the customer support, but you could also extend this to other applications that you, would, you wish to use. And I've only shown you a simple example of how to process a ticket and just find the response from the knowledge base. But there are more complicated issues when it comes to handling customer support issue for one of our customers who's an automaker. So for them, you know, not only just um, triaging the tickets to the appropriate person or appropriate uh, um, team, you could also look, at, look up the vehicle information. You could actually verify it by accessing your database to make sure that this customer's vehicle is actually like a valid, they're the valid owners of this vehicle. And also you could look up like their location, where their address is to locate like the nearest dealership for them to actually point uh, to direct them to the appropriate support centers, for example. And also for like um, technical issues and diagnosis, um, other than just like looking at the knowledge bases, um, I, or, I showed you earlier that you could even point them to the right parts that they should purchase and the price for those parts. And then of course, like if the AI is, AI come across really difficult tasks, then you could escalate this to another human support. And, and also you would be able to direct them to uh, scheduling an appointment um, in, in person visit to one of the uh, dealerships and the support centers. Um, there are other, other examples um, such as like, you know, finance and accounting where you could process invoice using these AI agents. You could do expense management. 
You could also do financial forecasting and also finance, uh, com compliance monitoring using the same sort of um, intelligent workflow, workflow created through um, human, human language. And even, even things like lead qualification, product matching, pricing, quote generation, and sales follow-up and closure, these are all some of the common use cases that we're observing in the market. Um, thank you so much for uh, listening to my um, presentation. And currently, we're looking for other design partners to work with. So please reach out to me at glenn at stochastic.ai. Thank you.